Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 28th of August and a super quick update this week. As always, got the update at the bottom of the screen in the description. New video this week. I created a video about this new multi-AZ VM creation option. In the portal, now you'll be surfaced this idea of instead of picking an availability zone, it might say select which availability zones you want it in. So what does that mean? What's happening behind the scenes? Uh, I go through it in that video. On to the updates. So the Azure VMware solution, that's that Azure hosted VMware private cloud that can be deployed in the Microsoft data centers, enables you to maybe use existing skills. I don't have to do conversions. I can migrate my VMs from an on-prem VMware into Azure, but then I get the benefit of them being in Azure so they're close to other services, interacting, getting them out of my data centers. Well, they've now added some new capabilities. Firstly, it's now available in Sweden Central. So, hey, more regions, more scope for my deployments. It now has vRealize login sites cloud support. So vRealize is all about this centralized logging and can now ingest from the Azure VMware solution. And it now has a public IP capability. So if I think about inbound and outbound internet access, with this new ability, I can expose thousands of public IP addresses to my Azure VMware solution. I get the distributed denial of service protection with that as well. And I can now have a choice in which pattern I want to use for that public connectivity. I could go via an Azure service and use that for my internet egress ingress with some kind of route management. I could use an AVS managed SNAP directly, but I don't get a lot of SNAP rule management. But now what I can actually do is have a public IP directly to the NSX Edge. So the NSX is the software defined networking solution as part of VMware. Well, once I get that public IP address directly to that NSX X, then existing Azure VMware solutions can just use it for outbound SNAP. I can use it for inbound DNAT to go to particular targets. I can load balance or even give a public IP direct to a workload. This gives me now this localized internet exit ingress point if I want to. So I have now a number of different patterns, but hey, that public IP capability is there. The Azure Virtual Desktop Service, that's that complete managed, either a desktop environment or applications can be published to many different types of devices, completely managed, but I do have node pools running in my subscription. Those node pools are what's actually hosting the sessions, be it a full desktop or the pixels from an application. Well, now what I can do is I can have auto scale for my pooled host pools. So what it's gonna let me have is really optimize my spend by stopping and starting hosts in the host pool. So I stop paying the compute cost part of that based on a scaling plan. So based on thresholds I configure, it will now stop and start so, hey, I only spend based on the nodes I need to be running to support the active sessions. On the storage side, so Azure Data Explorer now has Amazon S3 ingestion. So ADX is this huge data telemetry log ingestion and analytics service, and it can ingest from a huge range of sources, obviously lots of the Azure ones like Blob and Event Hub and IoT Hub, but also other things like Kafka. Well, now it can also directly ingest from an S3 bucket. So I don't have to now have some extract transform load or some orchestrator to get data from an S3 bucket into my Azure Data Explorer. Hey, if my data is in an S3 bucket, maybe it's a data lake or it's just a whole bunch of data or it's an archive, whatever it is, I can now ingest it directly in. I have to have a credential for the AWS to connect to it, but now I can ingest it directly into ADX. And then miscellaneous, the UAE North now has availability zone support. So those sets of data centers with their own independent and isolated power network and cooling, so that if there was some type of issue, maybe a substation issue, it will only impact one availability zone's worth of data centers, it would not impact the others. So now I can take advantage of that in UAE North. And that was it. 
I said it was super quick, this update. Uh, not a lot of them, but hope that helped. And until next one, take care.